make it we market is science please stop demonetizing my videos you Hello everyone, this is Jeff of Talflator Mouse, the channel that studies high-speed aerodynamics. Over the years, we've gotten hundreds of requests from scientifically-minded viewers asking us to propel drill bits at supersonic speeds. The idea is that the fluting on the drill bit will cause a natural rotation as it travels through the air. But it's not that simple. It has to be the right diameter, the right weight, the right length, and it can't destroy the barrel in the process. It has to be something that's engineered to do the job. Sartal, a professional candy maker in Israel, decided to take up the task and design and build these drill bit based projectiles for us. The diameter is absolutely critical because it must fit inside of a plastic shot cup. Therefore, we avoid any metal to metal contact, but it has to be the correct size to engage the rifling still. The weight of Saul's projectiles are also in spec. Weighing in at just under 34 grams, they are on the heavy side, but we could still propel these at supersonic speeds without any safety concerns. The direction of the fluting of the drill bits is correct also. These will be rotating in a clockwise direction as they leave the barrel. In order to verify that we actually have any airflow traveling through the internal fluting of these projectiles, we've added a small amount of mineral oil to the inside. We've verified that this will work by adding a tiny little drop of mineral oil to the hollow point of these 22 Magnum bullets. The mineral oil shows a distinctive vapor cloud in the wake of the bullet. In this experiment, we dyed the mineral oil red to make a more dramatic looking vapor cloud. Let's get out to the test grounds and see what effect the internal fluting has on these projectiles. All right, Tal Fleeter folks, we got a new one for you. For you. <laughs> <laughs> these are from Saltar from Israel. These are a uh, brass. You got to try it. I forgot to bring his candy out. It's fantastic candy that he makes. I need. Yeah, I'll put a link in the description. It's got the perfect texture flavor this uh, awesome my favorite is is the peanut flavored i mean it anyway go ahead i'm sorry you, you and greg got those i haven't gotten any yeah i yet. forgot to bring them out this is a uh, a brass sleeve with a drill bit in it <laughs> i don't know <laughs> he sacrificed a whole bunch of drill bits and it's soldered in there and brand new drill bits yeah jeff will show you on the tabletop what they look like up close but uh, we're going to try them 10 yards down range here and see if we can capture one. We've got a gallon jug of some uh, blue goo, blue juice, something, <laughs> and a vest behind it. So we'll yeah. see if we can capture one of these. And, yeah, uh, they're going to need full rifling. We're going to run it through the Mossberg 500, uh, full rifling. We're about 9 to 10 yards. It always looks different on camera. It looks a lot closer, but it really isn't. We're not lying to anybody freehand free bird okay Safe, i'm ready safety oh my goodness man that'll knock the pancakes right off your griddle the best you. went about 30 yards well we were hoping to capture that one but it eluded us we couldn't find it but the good news is it was a very accurate shot, and it was very stable in flight. But we don't see any uh, vapors from the mineral oil. But so far, it's looking really good. It looks like SAR uh, got all the dimensions correct on these things. So let's continue on and see what else we can blast. Okay, let's see what it does to a brick. Good grief. All right, I'll be the first to say, that's a lot of damage. Again, shot number two was as accurate and powerful as shot number one. One interesting thing to note here is we don't have a whole lot of spin. Normally through a full rifle barrel, we have a much, much higher spin rate than that. But apparently we don't need a massive amount of spin to obtain stability with these. 
It's pretty normal to not have at least a couple failures during a test. Luckily, SAR sent us enough of these that we could really, really test them out well. Okay, we gotta shoot the lead plate. Okay, I'm ready when you are. Eleven forty. Well, we now know what the velocity is. I didn't load these very hot. I wanted them just above the speed of sound when they left the barrel. Now, on this test, we obviously had some kind of a problem. Maybe the the wadding failed, or maybe that mineral oil I put in there caused you know way too much slippage between the shot cup and the projectile. Let's continue. How about a telephone? Does anyone know what that is anymore? Let's see if we can hit the telephone. I'm ready. All right, let's see if we can ring the phone. Well, this one was tumbling again. It was almost out of frame. We only saw a glimpse of it there, but it shot low and uh, Again, another failure. Okay, how about a telephone? Let's hit it. We decided to give it another try. This time it was flying stable. We might see a little bit of vapor there. I'm not really sure. Maybe you guys' eyes are better than mine. But it wasn't a very accurate shot. He just clipped the bottom of the phone. We'll give it one more try though. Two in a row though, it hit low. Yeah. Those were very, maybe it's fouling up or something. I don't know. Okay, I'm ready. All right, here we go. That was low. I had my dot on the top of the keypad. Well, this one, we can obviously see that the wadding failed. There's a big chunk of it stuck in the end of the projectile. Oddly, it hit almost in the same exact spot as the last shot, though. But the telephone lives for another day. Tactical ballistic book. Okay, we're ready. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'll make confetti out of that. We're obviously having some problems. Everything started out great at the beginning, so we're thinking maybe the barrel was getting uh, fouled or oily or something like that. So we wiped out the barrel, gave it another try, and this time everything was working beautifully. But we don't see the vapor cloud. Moved it back to about 12 yards, 13 yards? About 12 yards. Okay, better judging that meat. Remember, objects in the camera appear closer than they really are. It's not, it's not actually three inches away. <laughs> <laughs> AR-500 steel plate set at an angle for safety. Where are you gonna be aiming? We're going for center mass. Okay, I'm ready. All right, here we go. We move the target back to give the slug a little more time to slow down. Typically, a slug will lose about 10% of its speed in 10 yards. We're launching these just above the speed of sound, so we're hoping they'd, they'd go subsonic at this point and we start seeing a vapor cloud, but we don't. So are we getting airflow through the fluting of the slug? It doesn't look like we are. We'll definitely give the mineral oil another try or maybe try a different type of oil. I'm not sure what will actually show up better than that. But it worked really well on the 22 Magnum. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. We had a lot of fun making it. Uh, the, for the most part, the slugs worked very well. Uh, I wasn't sure what to expect, but Sar always seems to surprise me with his, his creations. As always, our Patreon supporters are our motivation. Thank you guys for supporting our channel. Okay. All right. It's like a half inch to the left a little bit. Yeah, my point aim was here. Okay.
There we go. Get the shadow out of there. Point impactors here. Not too bad. Yeah. Not bad, Saul. Cracked what the brick we had standing up behind <laughs> Yeah. And knocked the flex seal off the back. Yeah, that stuff is stuck on there pretty good. You can't really peel it off of your hands. 